This is a summary of the Huberman Lab podcast number one, how your nervous system works and changes. Disclaimer, Andrew Huberman is a professor, not a doctor. He does not prescribe anything. Talk to a medical professional before applying his tools. In this episode, Andrew Huberman discusses the parts list of the nervous system and opens the discussion of neuroplasticity. The nervous system contains parts of the brain, spinal cord, and all the connections between the brain, spinal cord, and organs of the body. It is composed of trillions of nerve cells, or neurons, spaced apart by little gaps, or synapses. These synapses are where impulses from one neuron are spit onto another neuron, which then spits onto another neuron, and another, and so on. Depending on the nerve cells that are active, you may be perceiving a color, moving your body, or even recalling a memory. Now that we know what the nervous system is, what does it do? There are five key things the nervous system does. First, there's sensation. Particular nerve cells sense particular things. For example, there are neurons in your ear that can sense different sounds, and neurons in your skin that can sense different types of touch. Another name for these neurons is sensory receptors. Sensory receptors are basically human filters. Different animals have different sensory receptors that allow them to sense things that humans can't. For example, certain birds have neurons that can detect magnetic fields. Second, there's perception, which is how we make sense of what we are sensing. Humans are capable of zoning in what we'll call the spotlight of attention onto specific things in order to gain perception from the sensations in that area. For example, focus on what your feet are touching at this moment. If they're on the ground, you may feel the soft touch of carpet or the cold feel of tile. We are also capable of dilating the spotlight to a broader area or concentrating it to a smaller area. Now, being humans, we do actually have the ability to multitask as we have what is called covert attention. In other words, we have the ability to split our spotlight of attention into two and perceive the sensory data from two different areas of the nervous system. Attention is completely under control, which is important for understanding aspects of our nervous system that are reflexive and those that are deliberate. Reflexive action, or bottom-up processing, is action that doesn't require your perception, while deliberate action, or top-down processing, does command perception. For example, when first learning how to ride a bike, you are receiving a large amount of sensory data that you have to choose to perceive. If you're starting to fall one way, you'll try and correct by moving the other way, and so on. After a time, however, you begin to do all these things, turning the handles, moving your feet, without having to focus on them to ride the bike. You may be able to have full conversations or otherwise put your spotlight of attention on something that does not directly correlate to staying balanced on the bike. This is because the nervous system wants to pass as much as it can off to reflexive action. Number three is emotions and feelings. I'm sure we've all felt happiness, sadness, boredom, and so on. These are created by certain chemicals released by nerve cells called neuromodulators. These include chemicals like dopamine, which tends to govern feelings of motivation. So when striving for a goal, dopamine would be released along each step of the way, providing the motivation to continue. Emotions are somewhat reflexive and lead us to our fourth topic, which is thoughts. Thoughts are like perceptions, except they draw not only on the present, but also on the past and future. Thoughts can be reflexive and just occur to us, or they can be deliberate. For example, think of a pink elephant. Finally, we have action. Everything from the previous four functions is designed to either impact our behavior or to not impact our behavior. Again, we remember that there's reflexive actions. However, to breach the topic of changing our neural system, we need to focus more on deliberate action, or again, top-down processing. Doing something deliberately, whether it's learning a new skill, changing our emotions, controlling our behavior, and so on, requires perceptions of the duration, path, and outcome. We'll call this DPO behavior. When engaging in DPO behavior, you recruit neuromodulators from areas of the brain and body that notice something is different. Huberman gives the example of when someone says something to you you find offensive and you choose not to respond. 
you may feel agitated and stressed because you are suppressing your behavior through top-down processing in order to wait to respond or say what you want in a more appropriate way. It feels like agitation and stress because you are actively suppressing a pre-built circuit. This leads us to neuroplasticity. Neurons can change their connections so that something that was once difficult to you becomes reflexive. From birth to about age 25, this plasticity is a lot easier to achieve. However, adults require a lot more effort to intentionally achieve this. Adult humans need to answer two important questions. One, what particular aspect am I trying to change? And two, how am I going to go about changing that thing? Neuroplasticity in adult human nervous systems is controlled by neuromodulators. Now, there's a very easy way to achieve this plasticity, but it has a pro and a con. The con is that it is only easily achieved during traumatic or terrible situations. The pro is that we have analyzed these situations and thus understand two of the key players, epinephrine and acetylcholine. Epinephrine is responsible for making us feel a heightened sense of alertness, and acetylcholine has the ability to hijack our spotlight of attention to make it brighter and more concentrated. Essentially, acetylcholine marks the neurons that are particularly active during a heightened level of attention from an epinephrine. An interesting note to lead us to our final point is that no neuroplasticity occurs during the event you're in or while engaging in the thing you're trying to learn. It actually happens during sleep and non-sleep deep rest. Every 24 hours, we go from alertness to calmness. That is, from an ability to focus on our DPO analyses to a complete inability to do this. In order to shape our nervous system, we need to master the transition from sleep to wakefulness and from wakefulness to sleep. Huberman ends this podcast with a brief discussion on ultradian rhythms, which are 90-minute cycles that occur 24 hours a day. This mastering the sleep slash wakefulness transition, and much more we will discuss in another summary. I have great respect for Andrew Huberman. I wanted to make these summaries because I understand that the amount of information presented in his podcast can be daunting and hard to process. Despite this, I think it has immense value and deserves to be heard by the masses. I am in no way affiliated with Andrew Huberman, the Huberman Lab podcast, or other relevant parties. Thank you.